Being is subject to interpretation in the monetary system, are you not afraid that other can use your identity on the internet, and commit crimes? What do you think about a system that creates billions of decorative elements, when hundreds of thousands of people die daily of starvation, and hundreds of thousands do not have a shelter? What do you think about the fact that, between you, the current discoveries, and the present technology, is a huge gap? Do you know how your refrigerator works? What about mobile phone? Do you know to enumerate five internal organs of your body? Do you know how they work? What do you actually know? Aren't you just a consumer? Do you not find it hard to form some solid ideas in a system that allowed thousands of conspiracy theories, a society that leaves room to interpretation, a society where religion is allowed as is true, among science? and those two are in contradiction about a crucial topic, existence. How do you trust some people that admit the fact that in the sky exists a creature who is watching you, and if you don't believe that, you will burn eternally into a place called hell? Those people cannot present any proof of that, and still they are considered as being normal, even more. Most of them populate the planet, and the monetary system does nothing to clarify this situation. What do you think about the fact that most of the children are told, that this story is real, the story of religion? How to say to one child that, if he doesn't pray, and if he will not be a faithful person, he will die eternally in hell, in flames. What kind of people are they? And why does the system allow this situation? Don't you ever wonder why do you collect so many objects? If anyway those objects will be obsolete next year or next month. What is this race all about? Aren't you tired? Remember. Sexual attraction. Pheromones. Sex. Now, we have. One. The culture accepted by the monetary system, promotes the family idea. The idea of family, is one where, a male and a female live together, for life. Same-sex partners, sexual attraction to others, the need for sex, pheromones. 2. The sexual scarcity. Constant coverage of certain parts of the body, create curiosity. People of this tribe do not wear clothes, and that normality is so normal for them, as normality is to wear clothes, for you. They are not curious about others' body, because it is not a scarcity. 3. Promoting sexuality in movies, commercials, TV shows. What can you get from here? Monsters, such as rape, pedophilia. Necrophilia? Zoophilia. Prohibiting such natural events, sex, by culture and promoting continually through media, and maintaining scarcity, will lead to such behavior from the individuals. Doesn't worry you, the fact, that, beauty is defined in the monetary system, for a category of shapes, that formed a human being. What if your child will have a birth defect? What if he will be fat, or have a big nose, or any other abnormality for the system normality? How we will take that, knowing how easily a human being is influenced by the environment? But, what if you will suffer an accident? How will you deal with that? Doesn't worry you. The fact that the world, the nations, have armies and weapons of mass destruction. You can be caught in the middle, and you have nothing to say about that. Doesn't worry you, the fact that wars, not only that are not solving anything, but represents the biggest business in the world, and because of that, the wars will never end. Isn't it dangerous with so many weapons in the world? The inequality between people, conflicts of ideas, 
for instance, religious conflicts, all the reasons for conflicts, and almost anyone can buy a weapon. Doesn't confuse you so many commercials? In who to trust? What's your opinion about a system that sells luck? Don't you wonder why those money aren't used to help the poorest ones? Don't you ever wonder why this man have so many, and you have nothing? Don't you find it unfair to rely on which family you were born? Aren't you scared about the fact that, in the monetary system, the aging problem doesn't count? And think that, even if those treatments exist, you will not benefit on them. Only the wealthy ones will benefit. Do you not feel offended that some people earn big money, just because they, look good, in monetary system standards? Aren't you tired of others telling you what to dress? Aren't you sick of the politicians' lies? I mean, they should organize better the society if they could, otherwise, what's their purpose? Isn't scarring you, a society that allocate budgets, limiting scientific researches for instance? With such a technological development, why people are getting worse and worse, less and less comfort? Automation began to replace almost all jobs, and, for getting food, you need to work for the monetary system, to have a job. Currently, 3D printers, or other technologies, can create gold or diamonds, which are considered precious materials in the monetary system. Many people hold such materials. Aren't they afraid that those will become non-values? And, does anybody wondered why are those materials considered as being values? That's because are scarce materials on this planet. Why do you allow your identity to be created through documents, your possessions, or your job? Why do you have a job that you hate? Don't you wonder why so many types of food instead of few them, but enough for everybody. What do you think about a society that allows cigarettes selling? These cancer sticks. Or alcohol. Why do you need alcohol? Could you not find happiness without it? Do you not feel sad, staying and watching others, telling about their lives? And, they are paid by the system for that. Monetary system includes religion and the payment system. All my movies as a kid showed Mexicans sleeping under a big hat in the sun. So Mexicans were always lazy and blacks were always running away from ghosts. All our movies. And the, the Italians were all the gangsters and the Irish were all drunk alcoholics. Our movies ran that way. So when a guy came with an Irish dialect, he wouldn't hire him. When a psychiatrist pledges that he wants to help people, and a male man comes to a psychiatrist and says, I'm in debt, I can't pay my bills, I'm on minimum wage, my car broke down, I got two kids, the psychiatrist is going to cost you 60 bucks an hour. How can you be a psychiatrist? How can you cater to human need in a monetary system? You have to ask these questions. You take any crazy idea. Uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard to make up a very crazy one day. Witches or something like that. And you tell about what people used to believe in witches. And of course, nobody believes in witches now. And you say, how could they believe in witches? Then you turn around and you say, uh, let's see. What witches do we believe in now? What ceremonies do we do? Every morning we brush our teeth. What is the evidence that the brushing of teeth does us any good in cavities? So you start wondering. Are we all, imagine if it, the, as the earth turns on the orbit, there's an edge between light and dark. And along that edge, all the people, along that edge, look for doing the same ritual. <laughs> for no good reason. Just like in the Middle Ages, there <laughs> and other rituals. And you try to picture this perpetual line of toothbrushers 
going around the earth. It's to take the world from another point of view. Now, it may be, may well be that brushing teeth is a very good thing because it gets rid of cavities. And you can ask, you can find out whether it does or it doesn't by trying to find out. Now, you can ask your dentist. He says, of course. And you say, how about evidence? I have not found the evidence from dentists because they just learned it in school. Now, I'm not trying to argue that it's good or bad to brush teeth. What I'm trying to argue for is to think about things from a new point of view. I gave up on this stuff. I gave up on my species, and I gave up on my uh, fellow Americans. I gave up on my countrymen. Because I think they all, I think we squandered a great gifts. I think humans were given great, great gifts. Walking upright, binocular vision, opposable thumb, large brain, making tools. Make tools, large brain, large brain, make better tools. Talk, have to link language, you take this, put in here. We learned language, the brain got bigger, language, we grew. We had great gifts, and we gave it up all up for both men, uh, for both money and uh, God. God and mammon, both. We gave it up to the high priests. It's your job. It's a, God's will. That's what they say. People say, it's God's will. That means God can do anything he wants, so why pray? They say, you pray for something. Okay, my, he didn't answer my prayers. Well, it's God's will. Well, if it's God's will, why did I even pray in the first place? He's going to do what he wants anyway. We gave it all up to superstition, primitive superstition, primitive shit, primitive shit. With invisible man in the sky looking down, keeping track of what we do, make sure we don't do the wrong thing. If we do, he puts us in hell or we burn forever. That kind of shit is very limiting. It's very limiting for this brain we have. So we keep ourselves limited, and then we want a toy and a gizmo and gold, and we want shiny things, and we want something to plug in that'll make big, big, big things for us. And, 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 and all that shit is nothing. It's nothing, we gave it all up. And Americans, who also had great gifts, when you take the theory of de democratic rule, self-government, okay, they, did, they started off wrong. They owned slaves, they didn't let women vote, they didn't let people who didn't own land vote. Fine, they got off on the wrong foot, but the ideas were good. Well, we fucking blew that, we polluted it. We polluted it with this stuff, things, material goods, games, gizmos, toys, gadgets, having possessions, oh, he's got a bigger truck, he says, see his truck, it's bigger than mine, I'm getting a new truck, Give, here's a big truck, oh, I'm getting that one, that's what, you got a video in it, your DVD too, he don't have a VDD, I got a DVD, you know, <sighs> whatever happened, that all of that is what happened, you know, and that's why I'm divorced from it now, I see it from a distance, I give myself a divorce, I said, George, emotionally you have no stake in this, you don't care one way or another, so watch it, have fun. You know what? I say it this way. When you're born in this world, you're given a ticket to the freak show. And when you're born in America, you're given a front row seat. And some of us get to sit there with notebooks. And I'm a notebook guy. Uh -huh. oh. oh my God, did you see that? Did you see what you just did? And I watch the freak show, and I cut my notes, and I make up stuff about it, and I talk about the freaks, and the freaks are all humans, and they're like me, and they're all the same, we're all the same. I'm not better, I'm not different, I'm just a part now. I'm separate, I'm over here because I put myself out of the mix. I don't have a stake in the outcome. I'm not a cheerleader for a given outcome now. Oh, they say if you scratch a cynic, you'll find a disappointed idealist. And I would admit that somewhere underneath all of this there's a little flicker of a flame of idealism that would love to see it all change. 